Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on anything and everything related to building and growing cleaning companies. If that's you, you are in the right spot. Uh, If you want to grow your cleaning company, you go to growmycleaningcompany.com, where you will find everything you need to grow your cleaning company. If you want to be a guest on the show or if you've got any feedback for us, you can reach out at 480-648-5149. Apply to be on the show. Drop us a line say hey we love talking to cleaning nation that said today we are talking with shadonna green from reasonable cleaning reasonable serves the maryland area with residential and commercial cleaning services or actually i think she's just started but she's going to serve the maryland area with residential commerce commercial services if you want to reach out to shadonna you can get a hold of her at reasonablecleaning.com. that said shadonna say hello to cleaning nation hello how is everybody um, they're awful. They texted me and said <laughs> life's terrible. And um, all right, first and foremost, I gotta ask you. I talked to a lot of people that have been in business a while and they don't have a website. Sounds like you are just now getting started. and You've already got a website. How'd you pull that off, sister? Um, you. <laughs> well, I didn't build your website. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> well, your knowledge, me being able to learn from all the podcasts you've done previously, and. I've really taken heed to the things that you said, and I want to make an impact when I introduce myself into the market of commercial cleaning. Well, a website is a extremely handy tool to have, so I'm glad that you've got that done. Did you build it yourself, or did you pay somebody? Um, I actually had a friend that I went to school with. I actually was a computer science major previously also, um, and I was able to network and get someone to build it for me and get a nice SEO package that you recommended and taking it from there. Oh, beautiful. Congratulations, sister. So uh, before we jump into the coaching, what got you? How'd you get connected into the or how'd you get engulfed into the Grow My Cleaning Company fold? And how did you uh, decide to start a cleaning business? Um. My father actually had a commercial cleaning business previously, so that inspired me to get into the business and live on that legacy because that's something that he really worked hard and it wasn't he wasn't able to complete it the way he wanted to, but I wanted to live on that along with my own aspiration to have my own business and run my own company, start my own family. I want to be able to have a flexible schedule and do kind of what I want to do when I want to do it, but in a structured way with my life. Who doesn't want that? All right. Well, just in case we have you back, let's do a little, let's have a little fun. Where do you want to be a year from now? And then we'll see, maybe we'll get you on in a year and see how you did. A year from now, I want to have at least three, two hour, two man hour contracts per day where I can have almost a full time team that I can service because I don't want to have employees that I can't pay well. And I want to have a business that I can run well. So I think that is a nice start for me within a year to be able to manage. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Well, shoot, let's see if we can't get you a head start on that goal. What can I help you with today, young lady? I want to be able to learn more about your total bid package that you we're getting slightly in depth too with a previous commercial cleaning podcast that you had done. Um, I just wanted to learn a little bit more and more specifically to my company and things that we can do. Beautiful. I love that you're listening uh, so closely to other stuff. You're kind of picking up on little uh, little tidbits that get dropped. And I would be happy to dive deep into that topic and see if we can set you up. And if you just do half the things we're going to talk about today, you are going to <laughs> just blow away the people that you're competing against, uh, which almost gives you an unfair advantage right off the bat. So uh, first and foremost, let me say there's a couple 
pieces to the bid package and I don't want to do halfway on each. So I'm going to pick one and we'll go deep into that. So I think I've talked about an other podcast and I'll see if I can put it in the show notes pages to which podcast you get a couple links here, uh, but on how to do the money and how to know how much to charge and how to do that. Since we've been over that a couple times in other podcasts, I'm going to leave that specific piece out and just talk about the presentation part of the bid, what it should actually look like. Uh, the exciting part about this is so many people just focus on how much the bid should be and they don't care anything about that. It's one page or two pages or they'll put it on letterhead with the little whatever and that's it. Um, we're, what we're going to talk about today is how to just make an actual package that blows people away. Sound fun? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool. So I... I can't remember when and where I've done this, but I know somewhere on the website, growmycleaningcompany.com or one of the podcasts, we've talked about lead magnets. And it, I promise we're going to get to the bid and it's all going to make sense. But I like starting with the lead magnet. And what a lead magnet is something you put on your website. So when visitors come, if they don't follow the, you know, sign up here to get a free quote, which is, you know, you don't know yet, but Clean Nation knows. That never happens. Almost rarely, zero to one responses we get a month of people actually falling, filling out on the, the website to get a quote. Maybe a couple more in residential, almost none in commercial. But so many of the customer or your prospects uh, that visit your site just leave. So I always have you put a lead magnet up of, hey, if you'd like this bit of information that would be helpful to someone looking to hire a cleaner, give me your email and I'll, I'll email it over to you. And then you can kind of continue that conversation later. Well, my, one of my favorite uh, ways to do that is five things or seven things or eight things you must know before hiring a residential cleaner, a maid service, a commercial cleaner, any of those things, right? So in that, I like things like, and then you kind of basically line out the, you, you're telling them how to buy. And ideally, you're going to be the only one in your community that fits all that criteria. So if they get these seven things they must know before they hire a cleaner, you're going to say things like, make sure they have workers' comp insurance. Make sure not only do they have workers' comp insurance, but they include the workers' comp insurance in the bid package. And you're going to start seeing where these are going to connect pretty quick. Make sure that all their picture, their employees have picture IDs. Make sure their employees are uniformed. Make sure that they their work is guaranteed. Don't accept anyone who doesn't have guaranteed work. Make sure they're bonded, insured. Make sure they've got good reviews from the community. So once you put together those seven things or five things or whatever you, you think, um, and that includes your unique selling proposition, which we can't even get into today. But once you've got that together, guess how you put your bid package together? It's just, it's just you've already outlined what you're going to do in your lead magnet, right? So if thing number one is make sure your employees have badges, the first page of your, of your bid package is going to be a picture with your employee with a picture ID and something under it saying, if you ever see one of our, you know, if anyone ever claims to be one of our employees on your property without this badge, call us immediately. They're not with us. Number two, that you should have background checks. So number, you know, and I'm making these up, but any of these are probably good things to steal, just like I said, just just like I say them. So if number two is background checks, the second thing in your bid package is going to be here's the name and number of our rep for our background check company, and here's what a typical background check looks like. Number three, make sure that your company guarantees their work. Well, the third thing in your bid package is going to be your guarantee. So again, I can give you. A, I think if you just, I know I've been talking fast, but if you rewind this, you've probably gotten seven or eight things already. Um, so you really want to find thing that's going to set you apart that your competition isn't doing. Uh, and this works, this works with everybody, but especially well, if you can get this on the government side, uh, ideally what you want to do is a government to write the RFP or the RFQ or request for proposal request for quotation. You want them to write it up with your standards that you set because you're the only one that even fits the standards. You end up being the only one that bids. So that's the best case scenario when you're the only bidder because no one else even qualifies to bid worst case scenario. You're not the only qualified bidder, but everyone else is turning in two sheets and you've got a picture of your uniforms. You've got a picture of your badge. You've got a, your, your guarantee. You've got the scope of work written out. You've got um, background checks, your workers' compensation insurance. You've got um, the 1-800 toll-free line 24 hours a day, seven days a week they can call. So really, that's kind of the things that you want to do. And you want to be creative. You want to spend... If it takes you a couple of weeks to really put this thing together and really figure it out, but then you can kind of create a system to crank out these bids. Every time you have a bid, you just put together this amazing package that looks customized just for them. Um, that can work. So that's the basic part. I know I'm going really fast. Are you keeping up with me, Shadon? Do you have any questions yet? No, I got you. 
Okay, so that's the basic stuff. The advanced stuff is now when we start getting into packaging and delivery. So if you really want to start getting nuts with this stuff, um, you can, you know, Harbor Freight's got some really cool boxes for 20 or 30 bucks that are like to hold like audio equipment and stuff. And they've got the fancy like egg crate foam in them. You put the bid in there and you put like a, a little packet in there and you kind of bring in the whole briefcase and you get in the briefcase, you put some candy or some food in there. Those are things you can really do to kick it to the next level. And if you're doing a commercial building at the bids, you know, three, 4,000 bucks a month, it's absolutely worth it to spend a hundred bucks to put together this bid package. You can even put a little video in there that you, that you, that you make just for them and buy a little DVD player or a little cheap iPad that um, automatically the video plays. It could be you explaining how excited you are working with them. So long story short, you want to be creative. You want to set yourself apart and you want to make sure that it's all, the whole bid is about them and benefits to them. And uh, you're, you're basically communicating uh, verbally, non-verbally, every way you get it, you, you have the opportunity, you're communicating. I understand your pain and we are better equipped to fix that pain than anyone else that you're going to talk to. And the, the cool thing is they start getting these packages that are amazing. Maybe you put some homemade cookies in there or you buy some sort of fancy treat you put in the box. Um, they start thinking, wow, if this is what it's like just to get a bid from them, how amazing is it going to be actually be customers with them? These guys are awesome. I want to do business with them. So um, man, I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute, but I get so fired up because you're, the only limitations here is your imagination. Any thoughts or any ideas you've got going on over there? Um, I've been getting materials together as far as like pens and calendars and stuff like that that I wanted to get ordered. I actually wanted your opinion on things like that. Would you consider that part of a bid package or would that be just little things to drop off? Yeah, get, well, I don't like a lot of tchotchkes to drop off because that's... Um, that's an a excuse for you or your salesperson to not do their job. That's the little dance that we do when this, the, the, the prospect says, okay, that sounds great. Leave me your information and we'll call you. Then you, you know, have some sort of brochure or nonsense to give them and give you an excuse to get the heck out of there. So I'm not a big fan of just random crap to drop off. I am a fan of specific things with a specific purpose that's going to get a result in their mind. So if you've got a specific question, fire away. Um, okay, well, no, I mean, because you, you said about things that were dropping off. Is there something specific that you were, you were going to drop off that you wanted to ask about? Well, working in an office, some people do come in and they have, like, calendars and note pens and things. And we do use those, but I can understand how we kind of just use them and set them to the side. But I do want to create four customized bid packages for when I'm delivering my product for my company. Yeah. So, so I don't go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, so I'm not totally against like kind of having those tchotchkes and stuff, but be creative. Like when I had my construction company, we got toilet paper with our logo on it. That was awesome. We got people begging for the toilet paper because it made us no one else did it, first of all. Second of all, they're sitting in the bathroom, they go to reach for toilet paper, like, are you kidding me? Is this guy's logo on that? Um, so we got a lot of bang for a buck there, but just calendars and tchotchkes and stuff like that. I don't want to say they won't work or they're bad. I just, that wouldn't be in my top 10 places I'd spend marketing dollars. So if you're going to do that, throw a good bit of creativity in there. So you do something that really blows them away as opposed to pens or pencils or yellow stickies or stuff that everybody else does that you're not going to get. If people aren't commenting and calling going, you did not just drop off toilet paper with your, with your logo on it, then you're probably not in the right ballpark. Okay. Did that, answer, did that answer your question? Yes, that gave me more of an insight of how I need to step my game up and get more creative. Yeah, I think the, the big issue I have, any marketing I want to do is direct response. I want tracking. I want to be able to say I put 100 bucks out and I got X amount back. And if I can't do that, I'm probably out. So I want to be able to say I put out 100 of these pencils and someone called saying specifically, I called from this pencil. Um, and if I can't get that, I'm not interested. So first and foremost, I'm always going to put the majority of my budget into some sort of direct response something. And if there's ever something that's not direct response, I'm going to have a real good reason. And it's going to be a pretty exciting package for some reason that uh, has additional benefits other than just getting customers. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions or thoughts before we hit the lightning round? No, I don't believe so. All right, lightning round it is. We're going to do three quick questions. You're going to give three awesome answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? 
I believe my best piece of advice was watching one of Steve Harvey's um, motivational videos. And he was just saying that you have to just jump. You have to just do what you want to do. And you have to get out there because if you don't do it, then it's never going to happen. The great and wise Steve Harvey, everybody. Well said, Shadonna. All right. What's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that maybe we can learn from as Cleaning Nation? I would say jumping in too quickly when I wasn't ready previously and I wasn't completely knowledgeable of what I needed to do to manage a company. Okay. So, so jumping now in too I, quick? Yeah. Okay. Last question. What's one idea that Cleaning Nation can put into practice today before their head hits the pillow that will improve their lives or their businesses? Staying organized. Um, organized, definitely staying organized, staying organized any way you can with your phone, whether it's writing things down better for you, but definitely staying organized with everything. Okay. Well said, sister. I really appreciate you calling. I love that you're right in the middle or right at the beginning of your business and you're kind of saying, hey, let's start right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your, your willingness to learn and grow and get coached. I appreciate you. I know that Clean Nation appreciates you. Clean Nation, if you want to check out Shadana's show notes page and get everything you need to grow your cleaning company, you know it's at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. You can leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I'll see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.